Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Queen of Pain. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. Bounty Hunter. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. 
Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Shaker. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Lucid <laughs> seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Necrophos. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> In 
Invoker. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Alchemist! What great analysis we just had as apparently half of our analysts going with CDC, Cousin Voker, Purge, do you have the same in kind of that in got buffed a lot, but I don't think that's everything yeah. about the draft. So I'm gonna say two of our analysts are slightly off base for this, but they seem really excited about it. They've been yeah. talking about it all weekend, and it finally is here, the invoker on CDEC side. But I'm actually more interested about the Alchemist. I yeah, mean me this too. is if Team Secret proved to actually utilize the Alchemist as both the carry, we give away the Aghanim Scepter, and then also the mid, you know, fighting alchemist that maybe picks up uh maybe we actually see that early solar crest where you buff up the nuke power or maybe uh, other ways to be able to play that uh we also saw the radiant alchemist before i mean this will be just such a versatile pick for team secret if they can prove to do it in two different ways yeah i, th I think the important thing is again get the bounty rune at level one guarantee mm -hmm. yourself that you have 500 gold on your mid -guy, <laughs> and then you just say well we'll see what we can do in the lane it's a lot yeah. of good uh, Aghanim starts this game. You can give one to Eternal Envy on the Necrophos. That one's very clear cut. Um, Aghanim's Bane, maybe not something you're going to want. There are a lot of right click heroes on CDEC, but um, Aghanim's Bane's a possibility. But the really good one, I think, is going to be maybe Dazzle. If you look at the hero CDEC, oh, yeah. has, you've got Invoker, if, especially if he goes Exhort. He's got some minus armor, some right click. And Bristleback, is his damage is really going to be negated by extra armor. So I feel like an Ags on Dazzle is definitely a possibility. But because it's Weehaw playing it, I don't think he needs Gamp. I think he can yeah. definitely just go the standard pub to play Alchemist. I mean, at least the mm -hmm. pubs where they're not like out air, eggs rush constantly. But just go typical items. You can either do the Radiance build or you can do like maybe a Battle Fury and do an AC. I, although I think the Vit Booster into Radiance was definitely the best Alk build I've seen so far. So I wouldn't be too surprised if these the same thing that we did yesterday. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I really don't think that we're going to be seeing any sort of Ags pass offense. We get, you know, past 60 minutes or something on this Alchemist. Uh, he is starting with the Bottle First build uh, by Bottle First. You're probably looking at him and going, that's only 200 gold. Well, a Stout Shield, two branches, some regen, that's enough. Once he gets the Bounty Rune, he's up to 700, can funnel himself out an early bottle. They're going to put some pressure on Misery, though, inside the jungle. CDC have taken control of the bottom Bounty Rune and brought Misery down to about 300 HP. Well, well, the nice part is he didn't waste a web like he did in the previous game, mm. so there's a lower chance of them getting a successful kill on him when he does up in lane. And actually a bristle with a sentry ward, uh, at least he's going to block for aggressive, this seems a little peculiar. But possibly going to block for aggressive, give the lane up, let aggressive do a solo versus bird mother. I guess that's alright in the early laning stage. He's going to need the sentry, so at the very least we're going to need to see bristle pass that over. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably just thinking, uh, maybe he just gets one CS and then TPs up to the top lane. Essentially just swapping out. The bottle's been passed to Puppy. Puppy will bring it mid, and I guess he'll get a dual lane for a little bit here. Um, Shiki going for Quas level 1, so may he, he may be going Quas Exhort, I'm guessing. Why do you think that is? The difference between the two builds, is it just... Um, and there are some heroes that are pretty dependent on their mana pool. Alchemist obviously has a bit more limited, and he's very dependent on it. Um, Necrophos has a pretty large mana pool, but still burning through that is always going to be helpful. Um, I, I think it could be really problematic for Alchemist, definitely. That's one you'll have issues with it. Uh, Bane as well. Um, I, I think Necrophos, if he doesn't get a kill, or if you drain most of his mana before he gets a kill, 
-hmm. He's not going to have enough mana for his ultimate sometimes. Right. And that could definitely really impact things. Yeah, you have a huge mana pool as Necrophos, but level 3 Reaper Scythe is 500 mana. Yeah. It's an absurd cost. It gets completely offset when you get the kill. Sadius yes. was buffed recently to give you double the mana or something like that than it did before. It ends up giving you a huge amount of mana, but you have yeah. to get the kill to get that. Yeah, it was a 50% increase. Ooh. Oh, nice pick off on the Brutal back. They're just able to run him down. The combination of Dazzle and Brood Mother. That's an extra security that uh, allows the Brood to just man fight. And we may even see this build. Uh, this is the build that we've seen a couple times versus certain heroes like Axe. Um, uh, I think Bristleback is another example where you go for the spin web and incapacitating bite, and you're basically doubling down in your kill power at level Ooh, Poppy six. Might. But Poppy, yeah, he's going to be run down by XZ here. Fortunately, this glow is going to help out and maybe he can now. get enough distance. He's got a, a shut grave, so as long as he pops at the right time here, this last quill okay. will not finish him, and they'll survive. That was good. Really paid play from him there. He waited until the last one. The, oh, the quill, misery, misery. Guy, he's got five stacks. Yeah, he's actually oh. got uh, an enchanted mango if he wants to try and throw it there, but. Doesn't actually go for it. He will get away. Meanwhile, Alchemist. Oh, look at that. Another bounty rune for him. Oh, it's in heaven, man. Every time you're getting a bounty, that's what you want. Nothing else matters. Fissure's going to block off Envy a little bit. He's going to eat through the trees. He's got high armor, and he's got so. Yeah, he's even got that mango just in case. Especially with the death pulse. I feel like that was such a big buff to the Necrophos because he was so bad in the laning phase um, yeah. that they buffed the death pulse from 75 to 125. Considering that can be both the, you know a damage output as well as a heal, that's a very big turnaround. It really hurt or helped his laning stage a lot before, like you said. It's just one of the worst skills ever, especially because only you can only cast it once or twice. Mm -hmm. So much better now, and both of these heroes can now heal. So they can basically—it's kind of similar to the Wisp strat yesterday. It was Wisp, Necrophos, Wisp Bane. All those heroes can heal a lot. We have oh. some trouble though. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, turn around uh, on table. Concussion. Garter's gonna try and get away. Nice tornado to interrupt that one, and she will just get one more right click before he is forced into the uh, healing cell. So. And more damage from creeps as well. Shiki's in a bit of trouble here. He does have a tango. And he's got two levels in quest, so he's getting a lot of regen. But that's not to say that a support can't necessarily rotate here and set up a kill. Yeah. Especially with we still having enough mana for more acid spray. And we have a lane rotation coming up. Misery TP into the top lane. He doesn't yet have any spawn spiderlings, but he can definitely hits on aggressive. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> early pressure on him. How do you really respond to this one? You just throw out a shadow, but that's really going to be offset by the level two spin webs that's going to keep him rather healthy. Misery's now going to go back for uh, all the uh, spawn vitalings. If he wants to match up against the brood, the uh, the queen of pain, that's obviously going to be the build. And the other really good thing about this lane swap is that CDEC has already used a lot of their sentries in their lanes, so they're kind of protected now. He just shifts to the top lane. He'll transition his build. He's got the early items that he needs. But he's still strong. Oh, we get a bounty. third bounty rune. This is so absurd. Uh, Pi is actually sitting in the middle lane while we has been collecting those bounties. Uh, Four minute power tread, bottle wand, <laughs> magic wand, by the way, and boots. Yeah, I mean, just look at the CS difference, right? 17 and 3 compared to 21 and 10. But you look at the net worth, oh 3k compared to almost 2k of Shiki. Power of the Alchemist. Now, despite Alchemist's ability to gain insane amounts of gold, he does lack in a lot of other areas. He has low HP max. His stat gain is awful. His best stat gain is 1.8. And he definitely does need items to make up for that fact. He's only really strong with his chemical rage up. When that's not up, his disable is easily counterable. You can dodge it. You can silence Alchemist. He is a bit of a weak hero, so it doesn't mean everything. So speaking of that, the, the weakness of the Alchemist and how you're so dependent on chemical rage initiation is oftentimes a big factor against an alchemist and shutting him down with this skills before he can get off that ult. do you think orchid is the choice here with this safe lane queen of pain that aggressive is playing that you just really want to try and get that early silent out so you can threaten these heroes like the necrophos and alchemist i think it's pretty decent against the hero pool uh, a lot of them can save themselves or delay a gank in dazzle necrolite or Necrophos, they all want to be able to cast a spell to be strong, so I could see an Orchid coming out of either the Queen of Pain or the Invoker this game, and there's already a Sage's Mask on Invoker, doesn't necessarily reveal anything because there's a million items you can build with that, but very likely it could be an Orchid on him as well. Pi is going to cut across here, do they actually have the damage to take out XZ? They're going to try and surround him with a big Shadow Wave, that's going to start him out, already down to half HP, with a Brain Tap over the top, they could definitely get this kill, as they have another Death Pulse coming up, XZ just puts himself in the trees, but he knows he's dead, Eternal Envy will get the benefits of that level 2 Sadist. Yeah, that's really nice. It wasn't just about the extra gold, it's also about the big mana heal that he gets from that, so lane push continues, Bristle's still dead for 13 seconds, they're going to do some tower damage. 
Misery has his level 6, so he's going to be quite dangerous. Doesn't actually get his ultimate, uh, just going back for the spawn spider links. He can be maxed out by level 7. Obviously makes a lot of sense. Very few times you're going to really see that ultimate being utilized uh, when you hit 6 anyway. We may be going the same build as Eternal Envy did. He's going for a fast medallion. It was the medallion into Solar Crest, which gives you a lot of farming potential and a lot of team fight survivability for a low cost, mm -hmm. which will then let you leverage that extra gold gain into eggs. So he may go the exact same build, but he might also just stick on an early medallion. We'll see what he does with it. But at, so far, it looks like it's going to be the same build that we saw yesterday. Carter. He's really been struggling to find good openings here. Um, he hasn't actually been able to contribute to a kill. The, the middle lane, the alchemist, uh, that's just a you can really gank up effectively, I feel, as any hunter. So he's just sort of been lost in the wood. And now I look at the stacks that are happening. We is going to have great opportunity to farm through those very soon. A lot of the heroes are actually really hard to gank. Maybe not it's dangerous. If you're ganking a Necrolite sure. for a Necrophos, for example, he's going to kill himself and do a large amount of your HP. It's hard to gank a Broodmother. Nice tornado. So fast. Cheeky, going to turn around on pylon. I Weeha just needs a couple more right clicks, won't be able to get it out of Fisher on a Wii, and he's going to be in some serious trouble underneath that tier 1 tower. Fortunately, Kevin the Rage, that HP regen, is enough to be able to keep him alive. Puppy does come in with the Dazzle to make sure that Alchemist stays alive. And now they back off and back to stacks, I guess. That hero's so hard to kill. 50 HP per second. And they don't really have the best carries. They don't really have anything that does a massive amount of sustained DPS. Maybe take on Bristletop. Yeah, they're gonna put the ultimate here from Misery. He doesn't really care if he's feeding away Spinalings as long as they can get XZ down here surrounding him. Shadow Way. Whoa, look at that damage. XZ is definitely dead after that one. What great setup. That's, this is just like the, uh, the, these are two very defensive support that reminds me of the Shadow Demon Dazzle combination yeah. where you get the, the description in, but Pylon now they're just finding these openings, three different heroes at the top, and then you throw some Spidalings in there, you get the full Shadow Wave damage, and it's just absurd, the offensive capability of that spell. Yeah, those two defensive heroes are two early game heroes that are pretty strong, and all of a sudden they're just, just falling Bristle, and they're saying, okay, this is pretty much only late game carry, and pulls at back, like, a uh, um, semi-carry kind of a thing, sometimes a hard carry, and they're just completely at least starting him down. They're going for him to do anything serious to the carries late game. Eternal Envy, pretty self-sufficient at this point in time, but they're still going to try and go... Pulse goes out, they have to throw up to make sure Eternal Envy does die here, as Puppy was going to TP in and provide that shell grave. Who knows what could have happened? Are they still going to complete this dive? Puppy doesn't have much mana to go on, but uh, it seems like it's just a bit too dangerous for CDEC. Yeah, his TP actually went to work. He didn't have mana after he TP'd in. So a bit of a mismanagement from him. But side, he's going to get some solo experience from being down here. And with all those early kills that he got, he's already level 6. This is going to be really nice for him. Rotation around. A level 8 alchemist. I don't really see them being able to gank that one. Garter just a bit too late to pick up Courier, unfortunately. Yeah. Nowhere near close to our Echo Slam or anything like that. So Oh, they go for the block off. You're taking one of those uh, smaller creeps. I don't think that was a terrible thing. Um, yeah. Small, very, very small DPS. Yeah. Really, if you fissure it, that's like a, that's a 100 gold swing, something like that. Because mm -hmm. I got Grievel's Greed. It's the bottle. And he can used to farm 1,400 gold for him. So basically, if he's going Solar Crest in just a moment. Yeah, I, I really think he is. I think that that item is just so efficient. I really like that. CD is pressuring the Necrolite, or the Necrophos. It's really the one hero that kind of low armor, not the best survivability, not very high HP. Shiki here as well, so dangerous. Yeah, the Tornado, they kind of blocked him out. AMP is definitely going down, and Eternal Envy has no more mana to work with, but he does have Puppy here. The Right Shell Grave can help keep Eternal Envy alive. Aggressive doesn't have his ultimate, though, and they do not have the burst damage to get the kill on the Necrophos. They force some rotations. Weeha coming in as well, so at least that's a small win, as he has completed his solar quest. Hopefully, the from farming for a little bit. Yeah, the survivability that the game gives you is massive. You normally have very low armor, but you get armor and you get evasion. So all of a sudden it becomes so hard for their opponents to nuke you down. He's going to pop his ulti. He gets it off in time. Oh dear, the chainstone isn't going to be tight enough. Now he starts getting that AP, AP reach and now he's turning things around with an unstable concussion, but a tornado goes out. He managed to get off the stun just in time. If he had stunned himself, that would have been happy. Q now comes in, but he doesn't have the fissure anymore. They're going to I die, but oh. I die. just simply turns around and gets the right click down. So it's a one for one trade up top.
lane. XD is being run down by Miz Creep, but XD will be fought at that bottom tier one tower. Goes down in the process. Wins for Team Secret across them. They traded one for one, but it was much heavier cost for CDC when it comes to heroes, just to make sure it was a trade off. And and the result is Team Secret are able to take advantages on the sidelines. And this this very fast solar crest is. It's a very innovative build. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this for months to come on Alchemist because the survivability is so high. You saw it there. He was completely caught out by three heroes, mm -hmm. and it, he just easily survived it. It wasn't a big deal at all for him. Yeah, especially with these heroes. I mean, you have a, a good amount of magic damage coming out from the Invoker as well as Queen of Pain. But especially with the Claws and Wagon Invoker, I think you're mm -hmm. much more dependent on your right clicks because one of your main sources is going to be the damage from uh, Cold Snap, right? Yeah. And so you have a lot of right clicks that are coming out from you. The Queen of Pain, I think, is actually like very physical damage dependent, uh, more mm -hmm. than you would expect out of an intelligence hero. With that completely. It's going to be so. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Killing spree. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Not so fast. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dominating. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack.
safe room. Summon My shadow lost. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's Perhaps. bottom tower is under attack. I think not. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower is under attack.
Radiance bottom tower Thank has been you. denied. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. middle tower is under attack. Yeah. 
Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. So. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. <laughs> Shut away! That's Radiant's top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. has to build it now. He's got a javelin. Yeah. I feel like there's no way they win if mm -hmm. he doesn't have a, a, an MKB. And it's not really the best bristle item. It's alright because it does give attack speed components. Uh, but he'd much rather buy something. Yeah, this really the heart. But yeah, you're kind of hitting into the mid period and usually you just want to step up on a bristle back. And if you're being forced to go for an item that doesn't give you any source of HP or strength, uh, you're going to be a little sad, but it's just the kind of game that CDC is forced into. And the same kind of applies for some of these other heroes. They're going to be forced in, uh, into uh, maybe MKBs eventually. But first, we do see a Desolator on Cheeky. What do you think? Uh, compared, comparing that to an MKB, they might kill Weeha here. Uh, oh, no nope. blink away. Use that item that he had for a long time. Like, the Deso helps him kill the supports, I guess. Like, Pi as well as Dazzle are going to be the reasons that this Deso is good. Yeah, you'll see Pile Eye drop real quickly. Crackle Slam jump in. Oh. They're going to try and pop Poppy, and they will be successful. We It's going to be stunned by it. as well. Great use of the Orchid. And they finish him off, and finally, CBC get themselves a winning team fight. It would start off perfectly. Go on the supports. The supports try to back up the other support, and then you turn and blow them up with the title. It's a really nice fight there by CC. I don't even think they had to use their BKB on Bristol. They didn't. They used it at some point, but the Deso actually really paying off. Against the mm -hmm. Alchemist, it's kind of bad, but... Now that he's got help. so much armor. Yeah. Yeah, that as well. I mean, evasion plus armor is a, is a hard situation to make. This actually doesn't do much damage at all right now. Yeah. Oh, don't tell me. Eternal Levy's going to go oh. down. Oh, my God. That Desolator plus DD. They just rip Eternal Levy a new one. And he's gone. All of a sudden, DD's here in such a better play position. I mean, just that gold change alone from that one kill on Eternal Levy was 1,500. Uh, it's Team Seeker to rack themselves up over a 12,000 gold lead. And now it's just 9K. Yo, this is a Deso purchase of a century. Like, yeah, it's good against Bristle and Dazzle, but did you see how fast? And it completely counters everything that E bought a BK. Mm -hmm. That does nothing against Deso. Yeah, it just like four shot him, and he he's gone this like, team fight really really safe build. But I feel like maybe Secret should have been more aggressive with Ice. Oh, wow. Jesus! Look at that minus armor plus the Shadow Wave and the Crisis. Oh man, he disappeared faster than Eternal Envy did. What a this is a minus armor game right now. Yeah, a lot of damage coming out in abnormal ways. It's not just by right clicking. Now, because of that, we're still going to see a Scythe of Ice for the Queen of Pain. You talked about how Eternal Envy's item choices have been 
a counter win for PKB, eventual Octarine core, but no like Shiva's pickup. And that's really like, the biggest item that either one of these teams can go for. Yeah. Would you rather see Shiva's on the Queen of Pain, or do you agree that the Sci-Fi is just hard lockdown is gonna benefit them more? Uh I don't think the Shiva does that much this game. It does reach the attack speed of Alchemy, but he already attacks stupidly fast, so what's the big deal? The rest of the team, yeah, can kill spiders, I guess. That part's pretty good, but I don't think Shiva is the way to go. I think Hex is definitely the right call. Just, like, look at their ganks so far. Their ganks have been so difficult. If yeah. you put a Hex on top of that, it increases your kill chances by a uh, bigger factor than a Shiva's would. Even yeah. Even though it doesn't increase your personal survivability as much. Yeah. The big thing being that both Alchemist and Necro most, they have so much more increased survivability if they're able to get off certain spells. Chemical yeah. Rage, Pulse, or BK, or BKB, <laughs> that's a man, huge I, one. I really don't like this BKB purchase that Envy had. I, I feel like he should just go for Atos or something else. Some int item, he would have farmed faster. Like, he's been hard countered by Death, so I don't think he expected any major minus armor coming out of CDC. That was just a really nice play from Shiki to buy that. It helps so much. And it just it puts one of Secret's cores in a bad place. Maybe it's not great against Alchemist, but against Necro, it's definitely a problem. I also feel like we have build hasn't accomplished either. Did he really need to buy Halberd? Yeah. He could have bought like a Battle Fury or an actual damage. Maybe he could have bought AC instead of the Halberd and he did, did you faster. see what he did exactly with that illusion? Because that was just like four creep waves. I'm not sure. How, like, did he run it from top to middle and like just co collect all oh, these yeah, creep yeah. waves in one gigantic group? And I some grab illusions, and they both did a did a spread delta split mm. instantly. So he probably okay. did collect the creep. Yeah. Waves. So he collected bottom and Very top, cool. brought it all middle, and then just through that creep. Great, so much value that's, in that situation. That's not efficiency, guys. That's laziness. <laughs> it's like I don't want to walk far for these creeps. I'll, I'll let my my. People Handle this. Uh, because of that, that old lead that uh, Team Secret did lose. That's still about a 7,000 lead. It'll start creeping back up. CDCs uh, are right. not finding kills. And there's the magic. Aghanim Scepter and on Necrophos. He's got way more HP than he had previously. Oh, okay. He's got a little bit more armor. There is a Vlad's in the game as well. It's been a misery this whole time. But obviously, he needs to be in the area to protect against that Desolator. Mm -hmm. Any other Ags that we're missing? Uh. I haven't seen. Nope. That's the only one. Poor we huh? Mystery running around. They've got a Manta now in the brood there. What do you think uh, Necrolites or Necrophos is building with his Perseverance? I think it's kind of weird I picked to grab right there. Mm. Like, if he's making a Lincolns, I dare say I would have liked him to an Orbiter. Yeah. It's probably not a Lincolns, but surely. Or sure. Maybe it's just a refresh pickup. Maybe that's why he bought it. He's like, well, I have to buy a person. There's the blink stun coming on XZ. Yeah, and they're going to be able to stall him up. But he has his back turn. He's just too dangerous to fight at this point in time. I think CDC is actually okay right now. They're actually keeping up on farm. Yeah. They have some cool items. I mean, does Lotus Harbor at any good value here? No, not really. Reflex, Silence, Shadow Strike. Another silence. Yeah, there's. I don't think it's there's just a, it. Nasal goo, I guess. It's not really. I feel like it has to be a pressure. I think it's looking for. It's not a cheese win, obviously, because they've gotten here a good skill, but it's a bit of a cheesy strat. Drop the Reap Scythe, refresh, and drop another Reaper yeah. Scythe. And you get it earlier because your Alchemy can farm it for you. I yeah. think that's what they're aiming for. Because you're just screwed at that point. You can't buy back your heroes. You're dead for like 100 seconds or something insane. Yeah, it's actually turns like one pick off to a game ender, right? Because yeah. if they find one hero, remove him, and then man into your base, they're gonna, you know, force some sort of fight. Five versus four. You get another pick off, then boom. Or Roach, or Towers, mm -hmm. or all these different things. It's like, oh, you have a minute and a half to do whatever you want with your <laughs> team. You get like yeah. five men wiped, and then you come, and you have like 30 seconds left <laughs> to do something. Like, it's so dangerous for CDEC this game to deal with. And they don't have that much survivability on Queen of Pain. No KB, no Lincolns. He has to be really cool. I guess there is a lot of setup, though. It's pretty much down to Weeha to find the initiation. The blink stun with him, and the projectile speed on the stun is low. So it's either that, or Pylai Dai needs to be in a good position. But he's very under-farmed. He's basically been moving around trying to setting up a force doesn't have a blink. So I think the limit is a secret right here. They don't have very good catch, but they definitely have decent farm, and they have a lot better pressure on the map. Weeha actually has 3k on him. Is it worth going for another? Oh, jump over. They're going to be able to get harder here. Quick kill. There's the Agons. And now the Bounty Hunters take their 5 seconds. 
And you're not the worst thing in the world for CDC. I mean, if anybody's going to get hit off, I feel like the Bounty Hunter is probably your best bet. You can't afford to lose your Shaker, and obviously you don't want to lose a core. He's level 11, and he's dead for 70. <laughs> that's, like a, that's like a level 20 <laughs> yeah. cooldown. That's one of the least fun things to play against. Being dead when you're trying to play Dota casually, it's... Uh, why am I dead so long? Oh, that's right, the... You all tab, come back a minute later. Nope, still dead. Still dead. Yeah. Any new items on him? Wow, there's a very deep ward. I didn't even notice this one. <laughs> uh, when did they even get this I think that was a pick-off when they went for bait. Okay. But that was a while ago. Basher got for Alchemist. I like the choice. That way he doesn't have to rely on unstable concoction hitting. He can just blink Bissell. Yeah, and this will also eventually get... Uh, another great source of damage. As you were saying earlier, the Alchemist isn't really a source for damage right now, mm -hmm. like his right clicks, but once you complete that Abyssal Blade, it's a gigantic upgrade. It helps a lot, definitely. He still has a lot of eggs to give. Get thrown on Bane, increases HP by 50%. Get thrown on Dazzle. There's a lot of space for Secret. It's only 37 minutes into this game. And as things continue, like, it's just so scary for CDC. If things go bad, they get Reaper Scythe, and then Secret has 70 seconds on the map. Yeah, and, and this extends to, you know, the game go on for a full another hour, and the Necrophos is still a terrifying hero. It's because it scales so well into the late game, you get more HP, it's more effective, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously, taking away a buyback. Plus so plus much, the later the game goes. They can accrue more Ags, they can buy Moon Shards. He's got so many ways he can go with his build. Oh, yeah. He can sell his Halberd, he can disassemble his Halberd. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he can make with it. Sanji Nash is probably not better at this point. So many ways his build can go. And uh, supercharging his team. Can buy his team a lot of sentry wards. Yeah, they could sit <laughs> just cover the whole map. <laughs> they could just sit back, farm their farm to their heart's content if they really wanted to. CDC are definitely the team that's much more dependent. I mean, you just look at their heroes. They're not very farm-oriented. They're much more dependent on kills. So if Secret wanted to, they could just essentially press CDC inside of their base and just wait out Roshans. And that's what they've been doing. Yeah. Like, oh, leave your base. We'll see you. And they can't do anything for a while. And we'll continue getting items and yeah. pressure. But I don't think they have to wait. They're going high ground. Tons of evasion on Alchemist. He's only got HP, but there's the link for Eternal Envy. He's supposed to BKB. Right. Yeah. yeah, the BKB goes off a turn. There's another Reaper Scythe one on Eddie. He does have a refresher and has another Reaper Scythe ready to go. Weeha actually coming forth. The BKB is going to wear out eventually on XZ. They get the stun on Weeha. The unstable concoction blows himself up, but really, Team Secret still have plenty of HP, and there's no way CDC can push out against that one. They still have the Aegis on Eternal Envy and another uh, Reaper Scythe. Really, all that was blown there was just the refresher. Yeah. The only thing that mattered. A little bit of a weird play from Envy. It, he keeps anticipating more damage coming out of a team, but it's just a Bane Dazzle. Broodmother has some damage output, but it's not huge, and Weeha also doesn't really have that many major damage items, so... Yeah. And he also can't even afford the mana, unless he gets a kill with his first... Oh, he gets next here. Yeah, this is gonna be a great pick off, especially if they get two times in a row. He's gone once. Q, is he gonna run into these supports? Blinks over to the side, knows he needs to get some chains done. Actually oh. goes for up, he locks Weeha inside of the trick! Voice down, him, but he's already oh, stunned he's himself! Just gonna right click him down, a big meteor land on his head, the HP region, he's taking five through off this, but finally it goes down, a Reaper Scythe takes the rest of the Eternal Levy, he's gonna be hunt down by Shiki, Q's on top of him as well, chain's done down, Eternal Levy as best he can, pops another BKB, starts getting away, Shiki, we will go down to the Radiant, now Q being chased away by a Levy, who's still sitting at 900 HP, XD desperately trying to catch up to that carry, and see if he can take him out before Misery right click them down they need a little bit more the fisher takes him out carter trying to get him up and turned into spider lake's misery trying to get into the trees hide himself from xd but the bristle back is like a blood and he just knows where he's going a smoke but pile on die you're not getting away xd is going to be able to catch him no sleep and he tps out wakes up but there's no chance for the rest of the kill cdc they barely managed to win the fight especially with that aegis on eternal fv oh that gold change that's five thousand <laughs> What a turnaround! There was 20,000 damage done in that fight. That was incredible. That was a top tier team fight right there. That was amazing. I, I really feel like Envy's suffering a bit with his item build though. Like, mm, yeah. the VIP booster had never really provided him that much. He's really limited on mana. His armor is non-existent. He's got a Vlad's from an ally. That's it. At this point, he really needs something like a Shiva's guard. Yeah. Slow down the damage. Like, Bristle's actually doing really good damage now. And he's very hard to deal with. You can't just him. Somebody will back him up. Yeah, he's got to get that armor item. Hey, he's got to get that Shiva's 
is we now have an AC that's about to be complete for the Bristleback. Even more minus armor. I mean, he's dipping into very dangerous negative armor territory when he's got the Desolator AC and all this goo on him as well. And CDC, for like the first time on game, actually feel a little bit of freedom in pushing out into, uh, into the map. There's still a lot of net worth coming out of Secret, mm -hmm. but they're going to at least stabilize. Like, the, the net worth will stay about the same. The percentage-wise will change a little bit, but that fight gives CDC a lot of hope. They definitely have tons of patience. They'll sit in their base, they'll wait for those opportunities when Envy goes back to farm. And they took it, and got a lot out of it. Secret. I mean, they you definitely saw that splitting up just opens these opportunities for CD and Secret are actually staying as a sort of four man now, farming away their own jungle. Looks like they're going to go for the bottom lane push, that three tower down, but I doubt they actually want to push out the lane fully uphill. They're probably just going to wait on Roshan, which is potentially up in a minute and a half. And the Abyssal Blade on Weeha, he really needs that, because mm, yeah. he keeps not getting his stun off. I think he stunned himself twice in that fight, and the best part was the initiation came before he activated his ultimate. So it got him to such a low percentage HP, he was like sitting at 400 or so as they focused him down. If if he'd have gotten that off as the team had started, the HP would have been at a big enough threshold where he stayed alive. So a lot of little mistakes in that team fight led to Secret just getting beaten barely. Misery does best to try to hold things together, but it's still a Broodmother carry. It's not a hero that scales extremely well as a carry hero. Team Secret. They're actually uh, all inside of the enemy jungle right now. CDD will all TP back as they uh, do seem to know. Team Secret's here. Just run back to base, they would have been caught in some nasty team fight. And they TP back. Envy continues to farm. 2,300 him. Neck pretty darn good at farming, but generally get most of his gold from when he team fights. But he's fine with this. Continue to Death Pulse. He's got lots of HP. Yeah, team's definitely not in serious trouble just yet. Another bad team fight like that, and you may see. CDC take control of the map, but right now CDC are still eventually going to crawl back to the same place they were 10 minutes ago, just with a lot more farm. And not too many new items out of them. Uh, an ultimate orb and invoker. It looks like Bristol's finished his AC. He's got a bash now as well, so he's really happy right now. This is basically the moment you want to be at as a Bristol. Three, four major damage items. He's pretty equivalent to a carry in a lot of ways. He definitely did more damage than Alchemist at this point, so it just becomes really difficult for Secret to deal with us. Yeah. He can get that uh, Bristle Blade before the next fight as well. Then Bristleback really stands up. Like, if that's the one opportunity where Weehawk is actually going to be able to stand up against the Bristle if he gets the, uh, you know, Bristle Blade bash onto the Bristleback while he's facing him and then just completely bats him down mm -hmm. with that increased attack speed from Chemical Rage. But otherwise, if you, you get the Bristle Blade on the Bristleback and that's completely altered. Yeah, the game comes down to killing supports, basically. Yeah. They have lots of disables. They're usually on low cooldown, and if, if your cores stay a lot regular supports, it's very easy to end up dealing with their their cores, assuming the BKB is not. But once you outlive the BKB duration, if you're playing if your puppy or your pilot die or something like that, then it's just it's basically over. Sleep the one guy that you don't want to deal with, you kill the other guy, and then you go one through one. All right. Basically, what happened to CDC the last fight? We got it up now for buyback and the ability, so we purchase it up, and this is good timing just before the Roshan's about to spawn. And he has, he has basically three mediocre items at this point. Solar Crest, Heaven's Halberd, and Blink Dagger. I would actually rather him have a Silver Edge instead of this Heaven's Halberd. That would be way better. Because mm, yeah. it could remove the Bristleback. Bristleback. Yeah, and that would be so powerful, especially with the Necros. Like, then you would have opportunities to get the Reaper Scythe and wouldn't have to worry about whether or not he's facing yeah. away from you. I do actually. Still Heaven's Halberd. Mm -hmm. Sell the evasion item, turn it into a silver edge. Yeah. It wouldn't cost him much. 900 gold. I think that's easily what he should do here. The HP is the same. He could issue with it as well. Maybe sell Blink. Trying to the courier. It just has support stuff in it, but I like these spreading spiders. This is really good, but they are smoke. See. It's going to be awkward. Their smoke starts popping with misery in the trees. They're already going. I die. Gets a four staff. Some distance away. The Fisher kind of misses. They're going to try and pop. Miss. They may be successful. Weehaw's right on top of all these heroes. Just barely. Let's do this. Oh. 
Oh, but Shiki! Holy cow! The physical damage is real! He just falls apart! XZ, now on his way out, trying to stay ahead of these heroes. He cannot possibly get caught by Eternal Envy. And that second Reaper fights, but it looks like it's gonna happen. Oh. He's gonna go down, and he's oh, dead man. for two minutes straight! This is what we're talking about. The late game potential of the Reaper Scythe with an Aghanim's upgrade. And Team Secret may have just won game two flat out from there. Shiki just hasn't translated good enough in the late game mm -hmm. as a core. You, you really saw it there. He won once, boom, first shot and he dies. He's trying his best to slow things down. He's got decent levels, but there's two dead heroes and they're out for 50 seconds. This is easily a triple rex. Oh, Mr. is maybe a little bit too far from his team. It's going to take some damage, but it's fine. The rest of the team secret all grouped up now. Ray taking out the second lane of Max. Go straight for top. I really felt like they could have just gone straight thrown, but... They're going to get a safer route of Mega Creeps and force out that GG from CDC. Good game to them. That's all it took. That was the danger of the Reaper Scythe. As soon as you catch some heroes, they're dead forever and the game ends. Like, CDC got so far there despite the disadvantage, and they played amazing, but it just wasn't enough there. Really great read by Team Secret going into that team fight with the Misery was in the trees, spreading out yep. those vitals, as you pointed out.